Hi, we're Shannon and Jerry Arner. And our dog, Betty White. Your hosts of the Arner Adventures podcast. Could we have named it something more creative? Probably. But it's the name of our blog. It's our last name. We're on an adventure. Yada, yada, yada. After running our own business, working 24-7. And don't forget a mental breakdown in between. We made a lifestyle change and decided to make the most out of life. We sold our house, most of our belongings, downsized, and moved to the coast. We live life minimally, but fully. We live each day as an adventure. This show will help you learn how to live life more fully, with more intention, by experiencing more, and with less stuff. We'll talk about our own experiences, interview others who have much to share by creating a spark in our lives. Some days we'll share real life ongoings of what we're going through and others will talk about our favorite flavor of waffle. Come join our adventure. It's It's the the Arner Adventures Adventures Podcast. Podcast. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry. And I'm Shannon. Our pup, Betty White, is hanging here with us. We're back for episode 48 of the Arner Adventures podcast. Today we have a Spark in Our Lives episode, an expert in making sure that your home is indeed your sanctuary, one that is safe to eat, sleep, and breathe in. But before we get to our guest, let's get to our review of the week. Today's review comes from Inspo Danny. Inspo Danny says, if you're looking for inspiration with the podcasts you listen to, this one's for you. Every single episode has so much inspo. Glad to have found the Arner Ventures podcast. Wow. Wow, that's... Inspo wow. Danny's just bringing the inspo. <laughs> bringing the inspo. I wonder one. if Inspo Danny just goes all around and leaves reviews on his or her favorite podcast. Just that inspirational. With that kind of name, I think that's that might be the case. I think you're right. We love that. Well, if you would like to bring the inspo like Inspo Danny did, please head over to lovethepodcast.com slash Arner Adventures and give us a five-star reviewer rating. These reviews light us up. They're a spark in our lives, much like today's guest. Yes, today's guest is Therese Fortin Barnes, and she is the guru of creating a non-toxic environment in your home. This was so informative, so much to learn, but it was so much fun. Let's go ahead and get to the conversation. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Our guest today aligns with everything that we want about our household. Green living, non-toxic environment, chemical free, a clean sanctuary. So we can't wait to get into this. Our guest today is Therese Fortin Barnes. She also goes by T. T is the household toxins health specialist and the head guru at the Green Living Gurus. She's an entrepreneur, activist, podcast host, and educator. She spreads awareness of chemical exposure that could cause many autoimmune illnesses, cancer, and other ailments. She does this through her Green Living Pioneer Coaching Program, in addition to her weekly podcast show, newsletter, blog posts, social media, and Tease Organics, a line of household cleaners and products that are healthy for you and your home. So she is advocating for this stuff and getting it out there. T, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you are welcome. Very excited to chat with you today. We do everything that we can to make our home green and not to- non-toxic and not use harsh, you know, the chemicals that are dangerous, but we could do better. We need to know more. You're our expert in all things green cleaning. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Any little tips I can help will, you know, go a long way. So here we go. How do you become a household toxins health coach? And what initially inspired you to, to go that route? So I think going back a little bit of my history will explain the answer to that question, because I grew up in a household. I still live in Buffalo, New York. I was very fortunate. I Uh, having a mother that was aware of the toxic chemicals back in the 60s and 70s. Um, She was, uh, her uh, family was from uh, Italy and Lebanon. And she grew up in a household where everything was just no processed foods, cooked from scratch, organic Mm -hmm. food. You Mm -hmm. clean with vinegar and baking soda. So that's how we grew up. So we grew up, I have three older sisters and younger brother, and we grew up that way. It was always organic food. We came home from school, you had apple or hummus or vegetables. We did not have uh, processed foods. We did not have Burger King, McDonald's. So I, that's what I knew life as. Yeah. And then as I got a little bit older, I realized, oh, wow, we might be the abnormal ones here because <laughs> in the 70s. And yeah. the 80s or whatever, 70s, primarily, you had you had 
takeout food, you had fast food, you had pizza, and they are throwing all this at you. So easy for families to just pick up this and give it to your kids. My mother was like, never am I doing that. And when we clean, we had to clean every Saturday and that was part of our chores. And it was cleaning with uh, baking soda and vinegar and vinegar and newspapers we would clean the windows with. Mm -hmm. So that's what I knew. And so then as we got a little bit older, started being called granola heads because everybody thought we were kind of weird. <laughs> and then I went to call when I went to college, I went to college to, I had a major in business and a minor in health because my goal was to open up a large health food store. I'm like, I want everybody to learn how great all these products are that are so healthy for you that you do not have to be cleaning your house with toxic chemicals. And so I had this whole business plan. I went to college, had the major in business, minor in health, came out with my business plan to open up this huge supermarket that everybody now knows as Whole Foods. <laughs> that was not my, that is, I have nothing to do with Whole Foods. I came out of college as a party planner because I was a big party planning person in high school, in college. I was the one that planned everything party wise. I still do for that matter. So yeah. I had a party planning business for 37 years in Buffalo, but through the course of that, I never lost track of what I really wanted to do was helping people live a healthier life, avoid yeah. toxic chemicals. And then what happened is a lot of people that had cancer or were getting sick, they would come to me and say, can you just come to my house and show me what potentially could have caused cancer? What, what am I putting on my skin? So oh. I'd go and detox people's homes. I just did it on the side. Nope, not for payment or anything, just for the love of it and love of helping people. And then 2020 came and prior to even the pandemic, I'm like, I was 57, I'm 59 now, but I was 57 at the time. And I said, okay, I want to, I want to pivot. I've planned over 700 events. I am done planning events. I just want to kind of pivot into what I really wanted to do my whole entire life. And so then I started Green Living Gurus. That's where I am today. Where I took it from 2020, the pandemic hit, my event planning business folded because of the pandemic. Sure. And I had all the time in the world. So I started the podcast. I started a product line. I just was diving in left and right. What can I do? What can I do? And trying to help as many people as possible. And that's really what, where I am today. That's yeah, really kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> Did where, any of your siblings from? ever have a rebellion stage or it's like, I'm going to go eat McDonald's and never, and never. You all <laughs> None of us. We are all, we are all cool. exact same way. We are all diehard, um, healthy huh. living, um, working out to healthy food yeah. to everything. Yeah. Now I can't say all the kids have grown up to <laughs> buy into our program. Right. Close, close, close. They, they rebelled a bit. And now when they get older, they're like, God, thank God you taught us that way. When we downsized and moved to our coastal bungalow, we knew what we wanted as far as a beachy coastal vibe aesthetic. If you're someone who follows our blog, you've seen me mention the book Surf Shack, Laid Back Living by the Water. I love it. I love the lifestyle, the whole surfer beach bungalow look. Even though we aren't surfers, we still want that sort of feel in our home. Laid back, casual, but also really cute. In comes Havenly. Havenly allows you to use the services of a professional designer virtually. After taking the Havenly design quiz, I was perfectly matched with my designer, Alyssa. Alyssa had experience with pet-friendly homes, small homes, coastal vibe aesthetic. She was able to extract my ideas that were living inside my brain and put them into her design magic skills to cultivate exactly what we envisioned. Check out the before and after on our website, arneradventures.com slash Havenly. That's H-A-V-E-N-L-Y. Alyssa just got it. She put together idea boards. I got to choose. We conversed back and forth. We even had a virtual call. It was just so easy. She was a real person, not some, you know, robot thing, the algorithm that they just matched us together. Alyssa's a person and she really did get it. Our space is wonderful. It's such an easy process. They have various packages that you can do for your living room or you can do your kitchen or bathroom or 
even a podcast room, they will match you with someone who can help you design that. If you would like to try Havenly, and I suggest that you do, go to their website, havenly.com, or you can use all the links down in the show notes, but use code ARNER25, that's A-R-N-E-R 25, and receive 25% off of your design package. What a deal. You're just going to love it. Now let's get back to the show. So is household toxins health coach something that you you actually go and attain a certificate for or something? Or is that just sort of what you go by? So it's a very big industry now, uh, mm-hmm. especially health coach. You know how big that industry is. But the the toxins and keeping toxins out of the home and educating people on toxins, I shouldn't say is a huge industry right now, but it's getting bigger and bigger. And there's a there's a woman called Lara Adler. She actually trains people in the toxins field, as opposed to just learning about your food. You know, we know there's so many health coaches out there that are talking about food, but this is really looking at the whole big picture of keeping toxic chemicals out of your life, home, um, as opposed to just your the food that you, you eat. Because we know that the products that you use that you put on your skin, that you wash your hair with, that you um, brush your teeth with, with have so many toxins in them that are potentially still get, are getting into your body as well, not just in our food items. So I've taken course after course and probably have about 100 books and just have educated myself for many years. But in the past few years, I really focused on taking a lot of different uh, courses on just on that field particularly. Uh what you put on your body, like your skin is, you know, just as detrimental as what you put into your body. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could kind of talk about that. How exactly do these toxins negatively affect us? Yes, that's a very good question. So there is a saying out there that is typically right, sometimes not all the time, but when you put something on your skin, it takes 26 seconds for it to get into your blood system. Mm. Our skin is our largest organ. Um, Not all of the toxins take 26 seconds. So, but that's typically what they are saying out there. When you put, when you put sunscreen on, let's take that for an example, you're putting sunscreen on your skin, certain sunscreens, I shouldn't say all, but certain sunscreens, which is pretty much the majority of them, especially conventional ones. That sunscreen has so many toxic chemicals in it that they're using to block the sun. And not only that, the fragrance that is in the sunscreen as well. So there's chemical after chemical after chemical that you are putting on your your skin, your kid's skin, especially if it's an aerosol. And those are going into your bloodstream. I have this thing. Is it the sun that is causing the cancer? Or is it the chemicals that are in the sunscreen that are baking into your body, potentially causing the cancer, especially if it has fragrance in it, which has known carcinogens in it, which Mm -hmm. many of them have benzene in it, which benzene is known to cause cancer. So a lot of lot of debates going on right now about that. But to, to go back to the products that you're putting on your skin, your shampoo, your makeup, your deodorant, your your cologne, uh, men and women, uh, uh, both. It, we put men put on typically about twelve products a day. Women put on about sixteen products a day, and anywhere in there, there's anywhere from fifty to one hundred fifty uh, different chemicals that you're potentially mixing into your uh, bloodstream through the um, through the skin, through your nails, through your lips, through your mouth, whatever hair um, that are mixing into your system. And nobody knows, nobody will ever know what that effect is having on your body. So, and how they're all mixing together. So, yeah, it's fascinating. It really is because once you you start looking at every item that you're using and you read the label and you see like, okay, these are like 12 different chemicals or 12 different ingredients, let's just say, because they're not Mm -hmm. all chemicals. Some are not, you know, some is ALO or whatever, but they're all going into you somehow. You're not eating them, but your body is taking them in. 
and you start adding up all of these things, it's like, oh boy, you know, how could that be affecting you? And then of course, if you're eating food that has not, you know, pesticides on it and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. So what about children? Is there a difference mm. in the way that it affects children than adults or is it the same? Uh, absolutely no. Their, their skin is uh, thinner. Their organs are smaller. Their organs are developing. Every, a child, not only child, but even growing girls and boys where they are developing and they're even teenagers, even, you know, until their all their organs are fully developed, it definitely affects them more. They are mm. much more susceptible to the, the, these chemicals that mm. are, some of them are potentially even changing the DNA in people because they're that, you know, that's how effective they are into what wow. they can do to your system. So I hear people like somebody that got cancer that was talking to me that her doctor said, well, it was the luck of the draw. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's, you know, she was so annoyed with that. It's like, it's not the luck of the draw. And she went back and looked at everything. She's like, it, it is and it isn't. You know, how do you know? You don't know. You really don't know. Nobody can really analyze it. But what you can do is pay attention to what you are using. Right. That could be. We're never going to say causes it, but could be causing cancer. Right. Or all these other illnesses, even, even acne, stomach problems, headaches, wheezing, uh, the, allergies, you name it, they, they all can be affecting um, people different ways. So, mm -hmm. so for someone who, you know, is either hearing this for the first time, or maybe that's why they tuned in or whatever that they're like, okay, I am on a mission. I'm going to go ahead and rid my house of these toxins. Number one, where should they start? Number two, are you still doing that? Can someone hire you and say, Hey, I need you to either come out or like if they're in North Carolina or wherever, do you do it virtually or? Yeah, absolutely. So one, uh, where do you start? Everybody's different, but where do you start? And you just start, take it slow. It's overwhelming because once you start looking at everything and looking at your cabinets in your bathroom and looking at your cleaning supplies and looking at your laundry detergent, and, oh my God, everything has chemicals in it. Everything has fragrance in it. You start slow and don't, you don't have to throw everything away, but start somewhere and take it slow. Now I know people that have done the drastic route, which of course I love, but they've done the drastic <laughs> route. I know, throw it all out. I mean, I've had people come to me like, I have cancer. I can't take this. I need, and they just want to throw, get rid of everything. And I help them transition. And it's, you know, you got to do it peacefully because it can be stressful. And sure. financially it can be, you know, you've got to spend money on new products. The good yeah. thing is you don't need a hundred products for all your different things that you have out there. You know, they want you to think you need 12 different cleaning supplies. They want you to think you need four different things to clean your laundry with. They think they want you to think you need all these products in your bathroom. So back it up a little bit and just take, take your time and assess the situation, assess, start, start with somewhere. And my, where I say start is cleaning supplies and laundry detergent. That's my, those are my number one, number two, okay. because cleaning supplies are being used almost every day, whether you're, and that's why I started my own line because I was sick of people thinking they need all 10 different things to clean your house with your mm -hmm. toilet, your counters, mm -hmm. your floor and all these chemicals. So you're breathing those chemicals in all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and the CDC, the FDA, it's all out there that our air in our homes are two to five times. And some people say report that it's two to a hundred times more polluted than the outdoor air oh because of, uh, because of the cleaning supplies, because of laundry detergent, the wow. air, I have an indoor air quality monitor and I take it to people's homes and we can see what, what chemicals are floating around their homes. You can't, you oh. can't smell them. You can't see them. But they're there from cleaning supplies to laundry. So laundry detergent is the second one. It's it probably is right up there with the cleaning supplies because anything you're cleaning your clothes with are you're breathing them in all day. You are sleeping in them. You are venting out into your house somehow. And you're also venting outside as well, I may add, because we want to take care of Mother Nature as well. But yeah. these are 
um, even if it's fragrance free or all, you know, someone said, oh, I use all free. I'm like, well, you have to look at that label. Look at that label and see what are you cleaning your clothes with? And there's many, and the good thing is there's many great alternatives out there as well. Uh, the manufacturers of those companies, there are those brands that want to make you think that they're, oh, free of natural, you know, free of harsh chemicals. The problem is there's so many different chemicals that they're also putting in them. Anyways, and dryer sheets. I, I Dryer sheets are probably one of the worst um, culprits out there as well. Yeah. Yeah. We got rid of dryer sheets Long years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. I know. I mean, I've known so many people that were addicted to them and addicted to the smell. I hear it all the time. And we are we associate things with our scents so much as humans that you grew up with a certain scent you think that's the way laundry should smell mm -hmm. and you think that's your fresh smell fresh scent and they they will tell you on the label fresh clean air scent well nothing <laughs> smells like fresh clean air unless you're hanging your clothes on the laundry line right you know what i've realized what's that jr People think that when the temperatures cool down that you don't need to drink as much water. Dehydration can happen any time of year. Drinking water is important year round. It's easy to stay hydrated with liquid IV. Absolutely. Liquid IV is a hydration multiplier. It's a powder in a packet so you can take them with you wherever you go. It's an electrolyte mix that you just add to your water. It delivers two to two and a half more hydration than water alone. So many flavors to choose from too. Grape, tropical punch, guava, passion fruit, strawberry. Okay, okay. Liquid IV has a ton <laughs> of flavors. There is something for everyone. If you want your water to work harder for you, you should definitely try Liquid IV. And for our listeners, if you go to their website, liquid-iv.com and use code Arner Adventures, you can save 15% and get free shipping. We'll link it in the show notes too. Liquid IV, fueling life's adventures. Those are all chemicals and they have to put additional chemicals in there to mask the chemicals to, that make that smell. It's a wow. very, so those are two areas that wow. you start with. You have to start looking at labels, just like if you were to buy something at the grocery store and hopefully you're looking at those labels too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you're looking at the labels that are anything that's coming in your home. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about when you're look when you're reading the label do you have information somewhere of what we should be looking for or i mean you know what you said aloe a lot of people know what aloe is mm. but there might be some things on there that we think are good and they're not or vice versa yes so that's uh that's really important because um even when i say aloe or aloe as you say it um, <laughs> in the south, in south. Uh, south. <laughs> uh that is those are things that uh are great ingredients right but the problem is with these conventional uh, products that are typically on, you know, shelves in Walmart and Kmart, and they'll say um, "alo" on the front, so they make you believe that it's it's fine. They, you know, if all those products turn their labels around, as opposed to having us look at the front, there would not be a lot of products sold because if you looked at the back of those labels and saw all those ingredients, and then the "alo" is like the last one. So it's really about looking at the label. What do you, do you want to put 20 ingredients on your skin, in your, in, on your hair, on your nails every single day that is going into your system somehow? Really l paying attention to that. So <laughs> the, it's, it's very hard. I mean, I know probably 5% of the ingredients that are on labels that, because there's 80,000 chemicals, there's no way you're going to ever know all the chemicals. Wow. There's common ones to look for. The number one thing that anybody can do to reduce your exposure to major chemicals from products is the word fragrance. Mm. Fragrance or the word perfume, they sometimes have it under, or perfume. Mm. That is it's the first, anybody that sends me a product, anytime I help anybody going through their cupboards, if it says fragrance, you don't even have to look at another ingredient because the word fragrance is not what you think it is. It is a trade secret. And what I mean by that is in the 1940s, Chanel number no. five had came out with their perfume, didn't want anybody to duplicate their perfume. So they went to the government and said, can you protect us and give us a trade secret? 
Yes, they did. They So now that word fragrance has carried through over how many decades, mm. still into this day, that if you have the word fragrance on any product, you do not have to disclose what ingredients are in that product. Oh, wow. And, it, oh and if you God. Google that, it's fascinating. And the amount of chemicals that are in that word mm. are dozens. And mm. they're oh. starting to find be benzene is a very common ingredient in fragrance. Oh. Benzene it, it causes cancer, not potentially cause it causes it can cause causes cancer and that has been found recently within the past year in suntan lotion and mm -hmm. i believe there was bug spray a couple other uh products that some some independent lab valisure which is out of uh the uh new england tested it and found benzene and now that's a whole is another issue but yeah. you avoid the word fragrance in anything you are using cologne shampoo deodorant laundry soap you are okay. making a huge step in the right direction to eliminating a lot of chemicals in your um system uh do you do consults still where you go into people's homes and oh yeah then, and then virtually do you do that or is that part of your code oh absolutely okay yep. yep anything yep all the time okay I, I help somebody over in london england i mean i do it all the time so absolutely whether I, I love going through people's homes, believe me. Uh, I love opening up cupboards, but uh, these days we can FaceTime, we can do whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like to take it slowly. You know, we start in the kitchen. Let's look in the kitchen. What are you storing your food in? What are you cooking your, your food in? Mm -hmm. uh, things like that. And maybe look in the cupboards a little bit and then the refrigerator. And then I love moving up into the a bathroom, which is a huge area where things are just loaded with toxic chemicals. And of course, cleaning supplies and laundry detergent, as I mentioned as well. Tell us about Tease pro Organics products and do you, do you make them in your home? How did it originate as far as you're like, all right, I'm going to start this. Were you actually making the things in your home and selling them? Tell us about the whole line. Yeah. So Tease Organics uh, started because I was just making my own product and I was making it. And then of course I started giving it away as a gift here and there to family and then some friends. And then they'd come back and say, well, we need more and you should <laughs> bottle this. And then I started thinking, okay, maybe I should bottle this. Everybody's loving this so much. And then in Buffalo, uh, somebody referred me to this company that does that. Um, so I don't have to make it in my kitchen anymore okay. and so they really they love the whole concept they just they said we want to help you in any way we possibly can so i gave him my recipe it's organic uh essential oils which i was adamant about them being purchased here in the united states a glass bottle which is very important when you have essential oils in anything it's got to be a dark glass bottle to hold the integrity of the essential oil uh vinegar and um purified water so then so yeah so we launched that mm, probably about nine months ago we're still growing we're just you know we're, i feel like we're still getting our feet wet with it but uh that's that's so i have an all-purpose cleaner and then i have three room sprays and then a bunch of other things Hopefully will come out down the road. Is a uh, laundry detergent on there or do you? It, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a few laundry detergents that I absolutely love. Uh, one is Molly Suds. I love yeah. what they do. Their, their brand. And then Meloria is another one. Um, and I believe those are all on my uh, website under my okay. shop, but uh, those are two. Um, people are like, what about uh seventh generation? Well, seventh generation is a great company they were bought out by Unilever. So I get worried when these companies that are making these great natural products that are bought out by these big companies that own a lot of this crap out there. But seventh generation has sort of stayed to their mission, but still they're not a hundred percent pure. Okay. They're still, they're still using chem chemicals. Is seventh generation okay? Yes. If you can only find seventh generation and it's, uh, it, they sell it at Target, okay, I'm fine. You know, that's okay. Do it. 
switch over from some of these other ones that are just using toxic chemicals in them. So in addition to Tea's Organic Products, you have a Green Living Pioneer coaching program. Yes. So what exactly is that? And how is it creating these non-toxic spaces? So it's a group program. So, and then you're automatically put into my private uh, Facebook page and we just meet every uh, so often that you can con consistently be part of the conversation and learning all year long on your own time. You know, that's, that's a community basically. Okay. Um, so yeah, so then I have that and then I also have my podcast and then of course all over social media and down the road, uh, other things. In yeah. The works. How do you stay up on it? Is it because you're involved in this? Does the information come to you? Or are you actively all the time going, all right, what else is out there? Like, how do you stay on top of all the new information? Uh, that is a very good question. I am consistently, constantly reading. I am part of a lot of different groups that are out there advocating for a lot of uh, laws to be changed. Yeah. Um, I am very active in New York State legislative uh, procedures and trying to get laws changed. And I sit in on uh, probably once every month during the season during, when they're in um, session fighting for new laws in New York state. And, you know, once, once California and New York changes laws, the rest of the country usually yeah. follows. So, um, so I am on, I am constantly educating myself and through my podcast, which I love, I, I interview people all over the country that are fighting for a lot of these reforms or written some books on glyphosate or fighting for the PFAS chemicals, which is a huge factor and huge yeah. problem in our country right now, especially our water. We didn't even talk about water, but uh, the chemicals that are in our drinking water and in our environment that are. And so I am uh, always trying to stay up on things and um, taking different courses. And I'm, I'm on webinars and uh, constantly in different um training sessions just to learn more about what's out there from scientists, even from their point of view, and also from the health coaching. And so we're, it's interesting. The good thing is, in a positive note, five years ago, there wasn't much of this movement going on with environmental toxins. Uh, really, in the, I'd say in the past five years, there are more people like me and we are banding together mm. and there's got to be things that are changed. And we're trying because you're, I mean, you, you know, the, 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 um, the holistic doctors out there, people thought they were quacks or yeah. different, you know, different health coaches that are trying to tell you to do things a certain way. And doctors are like, well, this is how we were trained. And, just on that note, doctors alone have only gotten between seven and like, I think seven and 15 hours on, on prevention. And it's oh. the pharmaceutical industry really feeds the, the medical profession, right? Yep. They yep. write, they write the books. They, yeah. they, they are the ones behind the money behind the books that trains these doctors. Well, they're mm -hmm. only trained on giving somebody medicine for their headache, for their condition mm -hmm. not like trying to find out the root cause let's try to go back and find out what the root cause is before we give you all this medicine let's try to change your diet let's try to you know diabetes let's look at why why potentially do you have diabetes not give you insulin i mean i've talked to people that have reversed their diabetes through their diet so yeah it's it's yeah. to their you know, so there's a whole movement going on. It, there's a shift. There's a lot of doctors that are starting to realize, and I've interviewed a bunch of them, starting to realize like, wow, we were never trained in this. We were only trained in giving medicine, not what we could do to help maybe change the course of this disease and prevent what they're what they're going through. So yeah. I love that. I love that. I love seeing that. I love hearing it. There's just so many positive oh. things happening out there. So mm -hmm. that's a breath of fresh air uh, to know that there's, we're not quacks anymore. <laughs> we're yeah. like, come on, yeah. let's, let's use mother nature, how she intended it 
to help you potentially reverse your illness and let's take care of mother nature on the on the same and then try to use food use things that have been given to us by mother nature to help maybe correct a lot of these problems that we all have or many yeah it's have. like the it's like the hippie ideals are finally coming around right <laughs> exactly <laughs> right and they were always the right thing but everybody Thought they were crazy. Yeah, really. <laughs> so what, was your mother's, were your mother's parents like this too? Does this go back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were, uh, one was, uh, one. my grandmother was off the boat from uh, Italy. My yeah. grandfather was from Lebanon and that's how they grew up. They grew up in countries that didn't have fast food, didn't have right. chemicals that they were spraying their crops with and they came here knowing yeah. different, you know, they just mm -hmm. knew that this is not how we want to do was well, not how we want to eat, you know, and the chemical industry really was came from World War II when the men were away at war and the, these, these, these companies, these manufacturers really preyed on the woman and said, you want to clean your house with this. So your husband, when he comes back from the war that you want a pristine house and you want to spray all these chemicals and they wow. got into the heads of so many women. And that's why, I mean, it fascinates me because people think that's the way you clean, you clean with 409. That's the smell of clean. And that mm -hmm. goes way back to when their parents when their mothers cleaned their homes, when their husbands were at war and they came home and they wanted to impress them. And uh, that is the marketing that's, they got into the brain of all these women. And while well, that got into the brain of all their kids and their kids. And I still have friends that clean with chemicals and it just, even as much as I preached to them and tried to get them to change, they still think that's the way you clean. That's the only way you can clean a counter is with 409 and spraying it. And, you know, so. When you go into a house and they clean that way, can you automatically tell? Automatically. Automatically. Uh, I can tell. Uh, yes. Immediately. Yeah. I was Without in a car. Meter. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Without my meter, I can tell. I was right. in a car with a driving six hours with one of my um, best friends and her daughter and she's sneezing the whole time. And I was, you know, I have to be very careful because it's a very sensitive issue. Yeah. And she thinks it's allergies. Well, she likes her laundry to smell good. And then she showed me her perfume she likes to use. And it has fragrance in it. What? It's vanilla. I'm like, it's not vanilla, honey. <laughs> Unfortunately, I like, do me one favor. Don't put it on your neck where your thyroid is because spray it in your hair. Don't put it on oh. anywhere here where it's going immediately into your thyroid. And oh, we have right. so many women, you know, that have thyroid problems and uh -huh. uh, endocrine disruptors. And I, I mean, and girls are having issues with their periods and mm -hmm. men are having sperm count issues. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. So, you know, it's just, you have to be really careful how you really talk to people about yeah. these things. Yeah. It's very, very gingerly. I, sometimes I blurt out things. I'm like, Ooh, I wish I didn't say that, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> Good yeah. thing you have a podcast. <laughs> right. Exactly. You're like, uh, you really need to tune into episode 52. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I do that all the time because I'm like, listen to this other person that is a specialist on thyroid health and yeah. this will really help you I oh, all the time. I, I, yeah. I refer them to my podcast all the time. So I bet. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. So listen, we're probably not the first to introduce you to the topic of CBD or CBD oil. If you're anything like us, it seems like every time you turn around, you're seeing a neon sign for CBD sold here at your local grocery store in a window as you're driving by or it flashes across your screen in an online ad. Shannon's sister told us about the benefits she was having from a brand she was using, and then we started paying attention to that brand. Spoiler alert, that brand is Danodan. Full transparency, we get about two to three CBD brands reaching out to us every week. And it wasn't until we started digging into the research that we learned that CBD isn't always CBD. They're just 
not all the same. Danadan Hemp Works makes organic hemp flower infusions. They're more than just CBD. Danadan's range of hemp products dissolve easily into any liquid and support your routine by helping you manage daily stress, promote healthy sleep, provide caffeine-free energy, and recover from activity-related stiffness and soreness. They also have CBD hemp flower infusion specifically designed for pets, and Betty White uses it every day. She loves it. We put it on our food. And with Danodan, you'll enjoy all the benefits of legal hemp, not just one or two compounds isolated in a lab. Get 20% off right now with the code ADVENTURE at danodan.com. We'll link it for you in the show notes. That's 20% off right now with the code ADVENTURE at danodan.com. Danodan, more than just CBD. Let's get to your fast five questions. These I love are- this. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I always said I feel like Jimmy Jimmy Fallon or something on like a late show. Awesome. That's what I feel like. Olive oil or coconut oil? Oh, well, I love olive oil. I will go with olive oil. Well, I'm Italian, so and uh-huh. I just love the taste of olive oil. Now, I use olive oil every morning when I uh, pull. I don't know if you know what pulling uh-huh. means. I know what pulling is. Uh-huh. So I pull with olive oil. I mean, uh-huh. I pull with coconut oil every coconut. single morning. Mm-hmm. But we really have not cooked a ton. We cook a little with it, but we're really, we love olive oil so much. I'm very, I'm, I love it. So. Well, let me ask you this olive oil. (laughs) I use to remove like my eye makeup and things like that. Is that still considered a good thing? Absolutely. I use uh, coconut oil. I use coconut oil on my skin. I use uh, coconut oil. Yeah. Uh, Coconut oil. oil I go through so much coconut oil. I just don't cook with it enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Probably shouldn't cook with it more, but um, I, I, we really love our olive oil, but I love yeah. co- coconut oil has so many different ways you can use it. Really. I mean, I use it on my face at night in the winter yeah. time, in the summertime. I don't do so much. It's also a natural sunscreen. They say it's, it's got mm. like SPF oh. eight, eight in it. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anytime I have an issue with like skin, my husband will get a rash or something. He'll put coconut oil on that. Wow. And just, uh-huh. just a little side note. This is an adult show, right? It's an adult show and I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's also used as a personal lubricant. Yes. Say, yes. Yeah. We did know that. I've heard that. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you knew what I was going to say. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I use it on my dog too. So he gets every, a little bit every morning and like his ears bother him once in a while. So I'll put coconut oil in it. And so. Oh, oh okay. Betty has a lot of like a uh, skin. It, she's allergic to grass. She's allergic to everything. And a lot of it could be the chemicals that are out could there. Be but, very easily. Yeah, but I'm thinking coconut oil. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Moving right along. Broom <laughs> or vacuum? Um, broom. Love my vacuum. Actually, um, broom is just quick and easy. Um, I'm one that. I don't need everything perfectly clean in my house. I don't mm-hmm. need, so I'll, we, we drop food on the floor all the time. We cook a lot, just a sweet, sweep, quick sweep. But I have a in-house, what do you call it? An in-house vacuum. Central back. Central back. Thank okay. you. So, okay. but, but it is very important to vacuum as much as you possibly can to get dust up, especially because dust will can hold a lot of those chemicals in Mm. Mm -hmm. in the dust podcast or book so i have a podcast but i love podcasts because i walk a lot but i walk a lot with books and audible audio yeah yeah but i love podcasts because you're really getting the emotion of people i mean uh, books are great i have a I, i can't i have so many books and i listen to them on audible so i'm really a podcast girl Especially if your podcast is constantly putting out information like this. And, right. and you know, a lot of people aren't going to read it. They're going to walk and drive in the car and listen to a podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Wine or coffee? Oh, wine. Okay. That's easy. I Hands like, down. Does she, even, does she even drink either one of those? I don't know. Oh, absolutely. I'm all about wine. I do not drink coffee. If I drink coffee, I drink decaf coffee because I can't handle caffeine. But um, no. I'm not a coffee lover. I'm, uh, I juice every morning and we drink lemon water every morning. And that's sort of like our coffee, but I am a 
big lover, huge lover of red wine, but I am a more so it has to be organic. Uh -huh. And wine, the wine uh, industry, the the grape crop is so overloaded with chemicals. Not only do they spray it, they inject it. Absolutely one, like I will not even drink a bottle of wine unless I know that it's organic. And there are some fabulous organic wines out there. Years ago, you couldn't find it. Nobody really yeah. wanted to. Uh -huh. It was sort of a, uh, you didn't, you didn't want to say you were organic because it was like a no, no. And like, nobody wants to buy your wine if it's organic. And <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing this for 30 years and you know, we had to search out the wine and so, but it's out there now. So people now are putting organic on their label. I got to tell you too, I have the caffeine thing too. I, I can't, uh, I drink half calf coffee, but just one cup in the morning. I just don't do that good with caffeine either, but yeah, I can do a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Number five is ketchup or mustard? Ketchup or mustard? Okay. Mustard for sure. Okay. <laughs> and mustard, but this is, so there's so many different kinds of mustard. Ketchup, right. is, yeah. ketchup, yeah. ketchup is ketchup. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't love ketchup. Um, maybe if I have a French fry here and there, but mustard is, there's so many like stone ground and mm -hmm. so many different amazing brands of mustard that we use mustard a lot in different recipes. So yeah. uh -huh. 100% mustard. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. Okay. Well, the question we ask everyone is what does a life well lived mean to you? So it means to me, I want to live as long as I possibly can. I want to be around as, pos as long as I possibly can. I want to feel the best I possibly can. And I know personally, I know from my own experience that you reduce the amount of chemicals that you put in your body, you're going to start realizing that you didn't even know you felt bad because you're going to feel so much better. You're going to sleep better. You are going to have more energy. You are going to uh, just realize that it, everything about what you do every single day, that you will feel so much more energized and and I guess that's my my take here that because everyone's like you have so much energy all the time I'm like my organs don't have to go crazy working off all these chemicals that I'm putting in my body every day am I perfect no of course not um, I color my hair but I color it with the least possible chemicals that you can you know use uh, I yeah. use Mad Madison Reed I color it myself but yeah you know, I, I put toenail polish on yes I do I'm gonna use the best I possibly can you do the best you can so you can live the healthiest longest life that you want to be on this earth so um that's my take on it uh, I mean my dad just died this year at age 92 mm. um he, he was he you know, you, you exercise as best you can, you drink the best water, you eat the best food, and you try to avoid as many chemicals as you can. So um, living, living life. And my mother taught me to plan your life like you're going to live forever, but live your life like you may die tomorrow. Oh, I love that. You say, yeah. Gosh, I could talk to you for hours, but you know, I could too. <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to tune into your podcast too. So please tell our audience where they can find you Teas Organics, uh, the podcast, everything. Yeah, it's really easy. So the website has everything on it. It's thegreenlivinggurus.com. And you'll see the podcast is listed on the uh, top menu. The shop under shop, Teas Organics is on there. I also have an Amazon store um, that I just list products on there that I just recommend that people look into those products that I list there. I make, I think about a dollar a year on that. Yeah. So it's not <laughs> about making money on that. It's really about educating people on different products that are out there and all the alternatives that are available to us. And we're very fortunate. We're very, all very lucky that we have access to all that. So. Right. Yeah. Also, if someone wants to, um, you know, work with you and have you help them, 
rid the toxins in their house, they can go to that website and find your coaching Absol program there and everything, right? Absolutely. My email, all my social media, everything's listed really um, completely on the whole entire website. And I'm across the board on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. So okay. I have a lot of, a lot of fun information out there. I try to keep it light. I try to keep yeah. it as educational as light as possible. So, right. Well, we're going to link all of that down in the show notes. Yay, and okay. We are yeah. so excited that you joined us and we are so thankful because we wanted to talk to an expert and you are the expert. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you so much. You're, so you're, you're welcome. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, that was, you know, we asked T to be on the show because we really wanted more information about making sure that our home was non-toxic and that we're doing everything that we can. We can always do better. I think we learned. We oh yeah, we did. We sure did. And we have we have made a lot of efforts on our own, but then listening to an expert like her, you realize, wow, there's so much more you can do. We really there really is so informative. It's really beneficial. Hopefully you all don't uh, you know, it's not to, meant to be scare tactic stuff. I think that her presentation of it was really well. And, you know, I am the person who wants to just go through and dump everything that we have that's toxic, but we won't do that. We won't be wasteful. We'll finish what we have and then move on if there, are, well, I know that there are things that we still have, but I think we do really well. I mean, we make our own, um, body stuff like skincare stuff and and when we don't we do use products that are all natural and i feel like we we do a really good job of reading labels oh we well yeah we have we've had a lot of practice in that and uh and her her advice was to not just throw everything away at one time but yeah. to go just do it gradually don't overwhelm because when you do that, sometimes you fall back and you it just becomes too much. So that's true. Yeah, you just got to do it a step at a time and, and just get there however you can. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, if this episode resonated with you or if you know of someone who would benefit from the knowledge that T was dropping, we'd love it if you would share it. Sharing is caring, friends. As always, you can find us at ArnerAdventures.com on Instagram at Arner Adventures, also linked in the show notes. So until next time, enjoy the journey that you're on. We're wishing you lots of adventures. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>